I'm Jeremy Moore and I'm a chimney engineer. Um, I've done this now for about 30, 30 odd years. Originally I got into chimney sweeping by, uh, I wanted, I always wanted to be self-employed. And at that time I worked on the buses in the bus company in Bath. And uh, I looked around for something I could do that wasn't too expensive to start off, <laughs> you know, with. And a friend of mine was a coal merchant. So he said, well, why don't you do some chimney sweeping? Because I know um, a man on my rounds that's always busy and could do with, with a hand light. So um, I s started off by going up to see him to make sure I wasn't going to get in his way or anything like that. Um, over the years, we've become really good friends and he helped me out. And uh, I also then, when he was ill, I managed to help him out. But um, that's how I got started. And, um, you, you know, that's what, what happened. Okay. Um, and how is, because you, you, you called yourself a chimney engineer. Mm. Uh, it seems a bit more modern, modern way of of saying uh, that how, how has it changed because a lot of people think of chimney sweeping as a victorian sort of you have children going up chimneys and things yeah so how, how, how has it changed how, well you know, as you can see i wouldn't get up a chimney <laughs> <laughs> um we do try and get up as far as we can on some chimneys you know we've got to for repairs and that but what's happened over the years yeah. when i first started i was a chimney sweep yeah. and we still do chimney sweeping. Um, Rick is a chimney sweep, as you know, and I've also got Tom, he's a chimney sweep. Um, and my son, who's with me in the business, his partner, he is more the chimney engineer, and I'm a bit of each, really, because um, I've got odour and I've got a few health problems. I've now sat back a bit to be the engineer as well, because it suits uh, my health better so to be a, a chimney sweep is somebody who just sweeps chimneys all the time um, or mostly at any rate and it has changed not loads over the years because you've still got your brushes you've still got your cane, well rods um, as you did many years ago um, the things that have changed are the rods are now made out of polypropylene and the brushes are now made out of nylon. And uh, the interim bit was where they used to have um, nylon brushes with what they call blockhead, which was a block of wood in the middle holding the nylon brushes, bristles. Now we do what they call a wire twill, which is a piece of metal and all the, all the bits of nylon in between. Then they twist it round to make your noise which is a lot easier because you can push it down to get it in through small access places and things like that so that has changed and also um, we now have vacuums uh, and we do you know keep the mess down because we use a vacuum we we seal it up with tape which they never used to do we've got like a cloth with a gusset in there so you can put your brush in seal your cloth round put your rod through the hoe, keep your hand on the, on the rod and, and keep the dust down to a minimum. You've also got your vacuum running, which will pick up any dust that managed to escape like. Um, and if you do it properly, you can, you can do it you know, virtually without any mess at all. You'll still get a smell, but without the mess. So that's how it's changed. There is now a new thing out um, that's not long come in and you can actually get a power sweep and what it is is they've got a brush on the end of a rod still but you you connect your rods in as you're going up but as you're going up you've got like a drill and you put connect it to the end of the rod go up one rod take that off put another rod on and then go on again and you can um you, the drill is going all the time so it cleans up and down but it's a much thinner uh brush so how it works is you know we shall see but that is the latest thing out yeah, um and you do most of your chimney sweeping locally or um do you have a we we go about 
30, 35 mile radius yeah. of, uh, you know, covert. Yeah. And have you ever swept any famous chimneys or no, manor homes? Or? We do a lot of chimneys for National Trust. Yeah. Uh, we do a lot of chimneys for the Diocese of Bath and Wells. Um, we do repairs and stuff for their chimneys and fit stoves, liners and things like that. Um, we've done Long Lee, uh, or lots and lots of different places, and some famous people as well. Uh, and the gentleman that does all these uh, grand designs, um, we fit in fireplaces for him as well. So yeah, we do. <laughs> So, um, yeah, you were talking about because uh, of your health, is there any sort of like uh, risks of health with the job? Um, yeah, the soot is carcinogenic, which um, is more prominent nowadays than it used to be. So you know more about it now, like everything else you never used to know years ago, did you? Um, and the gentleman I was talking about earlier, unfortunately, he has a cancer and um i got it <laughs> so yes there is there is risks and also i've got uh, copd which is for my lungs and i've um, that's the reasons why i can't do the chimney part now so yeah there is well when you first started the job were you kind of aware of those risks then or is that something that's not really no i wasn't no but um you like i said there's more awareness nowadays than there ever used to be so you get to find out these things. Uh, it's a bit late then, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, have they put any um, measures to stop that from happening to the people you've got employed for you now? Or? I do. Uh, I have told them all of the the, the problems, and um, we are aware of it. And I do ask them to wear a mask, but they uh, it if you put a mask on when you're going to sweep somebody's chimney, they sort sort of all of a sudden think you're going to make a heck of a mess. Uh, you know, and they don't seem to have been educated that you probably ought to do it for your own health. Like, you know. But um, they can if they want to. I, I tell them, you know, that they look at me and, you know, if you've got any sense, do it. But uh, whether they do or not, I leave that to them. You know, they've been told what to do. And what are your staff like in terms of making a mess? I imagine it they, can go quite wrong at times. Uh, very rare, I'm glad to say. And um, if we do, we clean it up anyway. But um, it's very rare that we have those problems. But if we did, we would sort it. You know, we would not leave it like it. It would be have sorted. Have you ever had it happen? Then? We had it happen uh, once in, in a house and we cleaned it from the room from top to bottom, just to make sure it was. And it wasn't that bad. It was just one of the vacuums went wrong and it, and it, and it blew, out, blew out the exhaust. So. Um, we just done it as a precaution, but it it wasn't that bad. Yeah, were the people all right about it? Yeah, they were actually. Yeah. Didn't destroy anything. Yeah, they no, they could see what happened, so it was, they could see it was not our fault. It was uh, a far, a part in the vacuum that went wrong. Yeah, and as so. um, uh, what was I going to say? Yeah, why does a chimney sweep need sweeping? Like. Well, when you when you burn your your fire or whatever you're burning, and all the deposits come off and the, all the gases go up the chimney, and as they're going up the chimney, the higher they get, the cooler the chimney gets. So the more that it comes to a deposit because you're cooling it down. That's why up near the top, near the pot, you always get the worst amount of deposits because it's cooled so much. Um, and that's why you why you must have it swept to, uh, to get these deposits out. But like with with wood, and you get like a creosote a tar that goes on the chimney. Um, this is hard to get out, and you know you have got to the chimney sweep nowadays. Like we're in the National Association of Chimney Sweeps, um, and we have to give everybody a certificate to uh, you know every time they have it swept. And, and on there, there's bits where you put what the state of their chimney is. And if it's pretty tarry and you couldn't get it to come down, um, you just got to warn the customer uh, that they need to have it 
done sorted it sometime or other there's various ways of doing it there's some chemicals you can use or um you can get a reamer and ream it out what's a reamer a reamer is uh yeah it's a bit like a a round thing like that and it's got chains coming off of it stainless steel chains and then there's a long long cable and it runs inside this cable and on the end you've got an electric drill a powerful one and you gradually work your way down through the chimney and and these change flowers as they call them they go down and gradually hit the tar off so that's so you just got to bash it off it is bashing it off yeah if you've seen tar you'd know where you got to bash it off you need a hammer and chisel to get it you know if you wanted to get it off and you had a a bit on the floor or something you'd have to hammer and chisel to get it off it goes like tar on the road on a mm. solid yeah so, so what would happen if someone didn't get their chimney swept the if, if they didn't and they had that um they would be more likely to catch it on fire oh you, your actual chimney can set on fire oh yeah 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 and um then you get the fire brigade come along and uh they'll let you know how bad it was and you know sometimes when you get it so hot you get what they call thermal shock uh, and it can split a chimney from top to bottom okay. yeah wow and so how what would you recommend like what, how regularly should someone have their chimneys in the on our forums they've also got that and and that's put on there that you should have it done every three months in the wood burning season so you sort of work it out from there because if you're using it all day every day you'd need it about three times a year but if you use it evenings and weekends it it works out to be like once a year you know and then you keep within your limits like and also they because it must be different when you work with different kinds of chimneys like are they kind of does do they vary a lot because obviously you've got like stately homes yeah to... yeah they all vary um no two chimneys are alike i'll be honest um they do vary a lot in size shape and a lot of people think chimneys are straight but they're not they go all the way through the house to get to the top um, and you can have up to two or three bends in a chimney easily and so how do your brushes manage that then well it's it is hard because your um, a lot of the brushes got a little knob on the top which helps a bit and when you hit one of these places it doesn't want to grain and that's it and all about it but what we do is we usually have a little bent rod on the first one because we get to know these different chimneys so if you put a bit of bent rod on the first one as you're going up through you can find the best place for it to go on up round and push it on up round but yeah it is our work i mean does it come with a lot of experience then kind yeah of knowing yeah all of them bits yeah yeah the longer you've been doing it the better you get into you you can like some people just especially when you start brute force push push and that's the hard way to do it you just got to get a bit of pressure on it gradually leave it and it will gradually go up as it's, itself it's still hard but a lot easier than just brute force so it was like a typical day then for a chimney sweep is um we start in the morning and you get his list of all his his clients you got to go to um make sure his van's all up right up and ready which we usually do at the end of the day you know we get it ready for the next day and off he go and um sweep his chimneys and clean his vacuum out in between a lot of talking and talking to the customers and it, it's more like um friends than than customers because you get over a period of time you you meet them you know say two three times a year and, and it's just catching up with the news you've missed from the from the prior time so it's it, it's it is nice as well as being a job because you you get to know the people and we've had people that have been with us for 20 odd years now you know and we we just treat them as though as an extended family if you know what i mean because we we know when something's happened to them or when their so and so's getting married and we sometimes go to do the do the wedding like but um yeah so it's it's quite nice really 
And it also because you mentioned you wanted to get into freelancing from the work you'd been doing previously. Have you kind of enjoyed the perks of freelancing and what are they? Um, what you mean by like going to the weddings? Or sorry, I would... Oh, no, no, freelancing sorry. in terms of... Because uh, you said you worked at a bus... Uh, oh, on yeah. the buses, yeah, the yeah. <laughs> yeah, sorry. No, on the buses, um, I was working there and then I, I wanted to be on my own. And that was why I moved into what I'd done. Because I was my own boss. Uh, Sometimes it's, you wonder why, because I think everybody thinks, because you're your own boss, if you want tomorrow off, you can have it, but it doesn't work out like that. <laughs> you, you usually got to go, even if you feel like having tomorrow off and you're, and you're ill, you still got to go to work because you, you can't let people down. And, and also, if you don't work, you don't get paid, do you? So, have you enjoyed the kind of the, the, this line of work? Oh yes, yeah, I really enjoyed it. As, as I was saying just now, it, it, you got so many people that are friends, rather than than uh, you know clients. They are clients as well, but they're also friends, and you you take an interest in what what happens to them as they do. Yeah. So. Do you need um certain kind of personality traits or characteristics to be a, a good professional chimney sweep? Then? Um, I would have thought so. Yeah, because um, I've had customers that have had chimney sweeps that aren't quite so. Uh, amenable in that way and um, they say oh it's nice to have somebody who's happy and cheerful in their work so yeah I would imagine so. Do, do people expect a kind of uh, Dick Van Dyke character to turn up if they... they sometimes sometimes but you know not a lot now they, they'll have a laugh about my name and they always want to know how I got my name and things like that and how it came about but yeah. Oh, what's, is that the name of the business? Yeah. Or? What's the name of the business? It's the Happy Smiling Chimney Services. <laughs> well, where has that come from? Is that... It was my mother. And uh, when I started, I said to her, um, oh, i got to put an advert in the paper, but I don't know what to put. Do you? Ah, yeah, she said, leave that to me. I'll give you your first few adverts. She said, I'll think of something to put in. And this is what she put on it. She called it Happy Smiling Chimney Sweep because back then I only just done sweeping. But because now we do so many different, you know, parts of chimneys, we decided to uh, make it services. So, uh, yeah, but it was my mother. And has that name helped out in business then? Yes, it has. Yeah, yeah, it has. And it's, it's nice in that you can be driving along and you'll see people laughing and you know why it is because they just noticed your van and what it says on there. Because if you've probably seen my van, you can't very well miss it. And... Um, so it's made ever so many people happy, <laughs> which is good. Yeah, and also, is there a time of year where you find yourself busier then? Yep, from sort of August, September up to Christmas is the busiest time. And also with Christmas, obviously chimneys are connected to Santa Claus. Do you ever have to find yourself while you're doing the job playing along the... Oh yeah, we very often play with the kids and yeah, we uh, have a laugh and go with the, with the children like about Father Christmas and that, yeah. And also, you mentioned about being part of an, uh, the National... Yeah, National Association of Chimney Sweeps. That's just to do with the chimney sweeping. Then our other part of our firm, or it's all the same, but, you know, the other part is fitting stoves, liners, um, chimney cowls, bird guards, fireplaces, you know, all that sort of thing. You have to be then in uh, another one, which is called uh, NAX which is, um, not that, sorry, HITAS, which is the uh, body, which is a bit like um, the oil is off tech. And I can never remember the, right. the gas one now because they changed it from Corrigy to... Whatever it is now. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, and we are HITAS for, for uh, solid fuel. Uh, so we have to be in that. And... Um, it it was a it was a bit funny because I had probably been doing this for about fifteen twenty years when when um, when they came into to being like and uh, I then had to go on courses to tell me how to do what I've been doing for the last fifteen years so it was a bit bit of um, it was not nice but you know you get used to it you've got to do these things I had to do it with Nax as well so. I'd already had to do it with them and all the people 
uh, or like three of the blokes that work for us, they they have had to do it as well. So. Well, I was going to ask you: uh, Is the uh, the job still changing at the moment? And from oh, yeah. those organisations, do you kind of get together and talk about different techniques? Yes, and... yeah, yeah. And and uh, things have changed so much in well in the last ten years, the multi fuel stoves or wood burning stoves as they used to be, or you still get wood burning, but about ten fifteen years ago, you if you ordered a stove, you would ask for a wood burning stove because that was what most people had now is changed to most people want a multi fuel stove than a wood burner so that has changed and not only that the, the stoves themselves have changed so much uh in the last 10 years and you're working now with a stove that would do 70 80 and i just had some come in that are 90 percent efficient and um we're just starting up a showroom and hopefully the we will have one of those in the showroom but 90 percent efficient is pretty good yeah, it's all right so it's um it's still changing a lot but do you find that it's also changing because less and less people have chimneys and stuff is it uh is it a dying trade or i wouldn't say it was dying at all um it it did take a downturn like every well lots of things have lately haven't they but with all the oil and gas going up so much I think you'll find that they will start going back to solid fuel again and um, we have been fitting more fireplaces you know and st stoves mainly um and it shows that it is it is still going so yeah it, it i wouldn't call it a dying trade at all no so in terms of the future for your business then do you see that and also being in somerset and uh, the organizations that you speak to do you find that somerset is uh Kind of a strong place for chimney sweeps as opposed to the cities or yeah yeah because um a lot of the time in the cities you've got restrictions of where you can have the fires put but we do we do do cities anyway but you know like in bath you've got certain places you can't fit fires and things like this or you've got to have a certain type of fire whereas out in the country you've got you know you've not got those restrictions so yeah it is a lot better how long have you been living in Somerset then? All my life. Yeah. Yeah, I was been born in the house just round the corner. <laughs> oh, <right. laughs> well, what was that like growing up round here? Okay, brilliant. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, have, you, have you ever been tempted to go and live in a city and be a, a no way? City I, no, I I had enough when I used to work in there on the buses. Uh, I used to think to myself, I don't mind coming here for a day, but it's nice to get back home. It, it's different in the country, you know. I, I wouldn't want to go in the city at all, no, thank you. So what do you see, uh, as my final question, what do you see mm. as the, um, the the future for chimney sweeping in Somerset? I would have thought it, it, it would go on and on. You know, it, it, the way they're making stoves now, that they can compare with the gas and oil, you know, they, they can turn them up and down the same as those. Um, all right, you've got to light it, but before it used to be hard to light now they're easy to light you know uh, and i would have thought you know they'd go on and on <laughs> i hope <laughs>